Hi, this is Kirsten from JK Fiber Arts. Welcome back. We are in the fourth part now of the opposing three-ply sock yarn spin. We're going to wind the final plied yarn onto the Nitty Knotty and then set the twist. So let's get started. So I'm gonna wind this onto the Nitty Knotty and then uh, we'll uh, see how beautiful this looks. So uh, to use my Nitty Knotty, just take the end here and uh, hold that with my thumb. Go, I go around the top that is flared here because it's less likely to slide off that one. And then you go over the top and down and around and then you go up and down and I keep my hand fits nicely in between. And if you look from the top, you've got two Bs so V, V, and you just maintain that pattern. I'll go slow here so you can hopefully hear this is on frame. And then we're on the back. And then the bottom to the top. And when you wind onto the nitty knotty, you want it to stay under tension. So oops, you can see how much curl I have in here. Hopefully this is not gonna look like Little Orphan Annie's hair do whenever I take it off of here. We'll find out soon. <laughs> but you wanna have it under uh, tension uh, and the uh, tension is actually uh, helping to relax some of the twist. So don't be afraid that it's too tight on your Nitty Knotty, it's not. And uh, prior to uh, winding, I uh, cut four pieces of scrap yarn and I will uh, use that to uh, tie this off. I uh, tie, um, I use four ties just in case something breaks. Uh, you won't have a, a tangle catastrophe whenever you're setting the twist or whenever you're trying to uh, cake this up. You can see already how beautiful. Oh, I'm so excited about this. Look how pretty that is. It is really pretty. So I'm just going to keep doing this and then I'll show you what it looks like at the end. We'll tie it off and then we'll get a sense for how much over twist there is in this. Uh, I'm getting a sense now that there's a fair amount, <laughs> but uh, we're going to see. You can see as it's coming up, uh, if, I don't know if you can see it on the floor here, but you can see as it's coming up in, you, you always think it's not enough twist and then when it comes off, it's way, way more twist than you think. But <clears throat> we shall see. That's good though, then it'll be also a good video to demonstrate thwacking. I do like to thwack, it's nice. Uh, it, it distributes the twist around and um, it's, uh, it gives you a little bit of halo, it foofs the yarn up a little bit. I like it for most things, not everything. All right, let me take a little pause here and turn off the camera. <laughs> I have the uh, wound yarn onto the Nitty Knotty. I did make a mistake and you'll see, I do this all the time, I forget. I pause to turn the camera off and you can probably see here, uh, there's um, two loops around there because I anchored it and then I forgot to unanchor it. So when I take it off, there'll be a loop. It just affects the aesthetics of it, that's all. Um, so uh, here we go, it's the uh, moment of truth. Drum roll, let's see how much over twist there is. Over twisted it's over twisted but all in all not too bad you can see it's got some uh, where I had that loop uh, that it, it, it has two areas of uh, twist that are you know really really over twisted and you can see here see how it sproings that's the elastic beauty uh, of the um, opposing ply but it is you can but you can appreciate uh, look at the elasticity of it, it's really cool. If you look at it, it's like really nice. Now um, it'll be an excellent uh, one to demonstrate thwacking on because, let's see if we let that go. Yeah, it's got a fair amount of over twist in it. Now I'm going to set the twist. I use cool water and uh, Euclid uh, wool wash, it's no rinse. And uh, here is the overspun opposing ply and uh, 
not the worst I've ever done opposing ply, but probably my second worst. <laughs> uh, it is really beautiful though. So uh, you're gonna see in here, let's see if we can find any of these really over twisted spots. Um, yeah, right there's a good one. So we're gonna try to get all these little coils out. Uh, all I'm gonna do is just drop it in my bucket and I'm going to just push it down in there no agitating and I'm just gonna let it soak for about 30 minutes and uh, then we'll come back and I'll show you how to thwack. All right, we are ready to take this out. It's been about 30 minutes. Um, this is why you tie it in four places just in case something comes undone while it's wet. Uh, so here we are out of the water. And then what I do is I don't um, twist it or wring it. I just kind of slide my hand down and get the water out. I just squeeze. No, not twisting. I have a little bit of color run there. Next thing that I do is put this uh, on my towel like that, and then I'm gonna just roll it up here. And I will roll it. And then I'll stomp on it. Extra water out. And we'll see what this looks like and how the twist is already made. All right, here we have our yarn. Um, this is uh, now uh, been uh, wet and dried. I'm gonna see if I, uh, sorry, dried in a towel. It's still, it's still got some uh, wetness to it here. So what I'm gonna do first is just snap it a few times and rotate it around, give it a couple of good snaps. That'll usually help with the twist to distribute it. Don't hit the wall with your knuckles. That's something that never happens except when you're trying to uh, hold the whole thing in front of the video camera. <laughs> so little snaps there. Um, you can see already that it has relaxed really nicely. Uh, you know, I didn't, I haven't even thwacked anything yet. And all of that elasticity, like the over twist, is already almost completely gone. So now I'm going to thwack it. Uh, and basically, uh, this is my favorite thwacking spot in my house. Uh, it is right on my uh, kitchen countertop. The way that I thwack is I just take the uh, yarn in my hand here and I uh, just wind up and hit it like this. A few times. And then what I do is I rotate from where my hand was, step on back and and I'm thwacking this pretty good, rotating my hand because I had a lot of over twist. One more go. And now let's take a look and see what we've got. So now, if we hold this up and look at it, let's see here. And now you can see all of that twist uh, is already relaxed. So, you know, there's no weight required to hang on this or any of those things. Um, it looks quite beautiful. I'm gonna go hang it up outside to dry for a little bit. And then you'll see when it's finished, it will actually relax even a little bit more. And so what you thought was like, yikes, is gorgeous. And, um, and now it's nice and well balanced because that twist was distributed throughout. Um, it will increase the halo of uh, yarns. This already had a little bit of halo uh, from the Shetland and from the silk. Uh, but um, it didn't, I don't think, increase it very much. Uh, some yarns you don't want to thwack, um, but uh, this one, absolutely. Uh, so uh, let me go hang this up and you can see uh, how uh, gorgeous this is gonna be. God, I really like it. It's gonna be perfect. 
This is one of my uh, best purchases ever. It is a $2.50 tension rod from Walmart. And all I do is do that and hang my yarn right there on it. And it will uh, dry there. And you can do this inside. You can do it in the doorway. You can do it anywhere. I love it. It is a great uh, way to uh, hang your yarn to dry. I can hang multiple skeins at once. It's fantastic. So we'll be back uh, to um, look at this uh, when it's all dry, but you can see now that uh, there is uh, no more of the uh, curls here. Even down at the bottom, it looks great. And this is going to knit up into a beautiful pair of socks. Here we have our final yarn and it is well balanced. It's got a nice 15 degree angle of twist on the three ply. The yarn has maintained the elasticity that will uh, give you a great knit sock that's gonna wear well. Uh, now all that's left to do is to find a pattern. The way this spun, and if you saw the last video, it, uh, it had a, a gentle stripe to it. Um, I think maybe a faceted rib type sock would be nice here. This will also lend itself to a, a good slip stitch pattern to accentuate the color changes. So I am off to find the perfect pattern and I will be back with my first tutorial on how to knit a sock with your hand spun yarn. It's going to be awesome. Wait till you see it. Uh, I will see you soon. This is Kirsten from JK Fiber Arts. Don't forget, if you found anything in this video useful, please like and subscribe. I will see you next time. Until then, spin happy.